Welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners. This is part 51. If you are experiencing chattering when machining, here are some interesting solutions to the problem. In the previous episode, I tried to explain what chattering is in this context. And for the video, in order to make the chattering worse than it really should have been, I drilled the centre hole in the mandrel a bit too shallow, so the mandrel wasn't fully supported as it should have been. Here, I'm drilling it a lot deeper. This is section one, using a suitable cutting tool. In the previous episode, I used quite a selection of unsuitable cutting tools. I always have a round nose tool mounted in the holder so I can cut like this. It's perfect for truing up flywheels. But here, once again, I'm making a couple of fundamental errors. I know it doesn't look like the flywheel is revolving too fast, but at the rim, it's revolving a lot faster than it is in the centre. In a similar way to the windmills that are dotted all over the country, their tip speeds really are fast, because they're a long way from the centre. As you can clearly hear, it's chattering nicely. And I would like to mention, just one more time, I'm doing this on purpose. I'm more than capable of turning a flywheel without chatter. If I do that, no one's going to learn anything. So please be aware, I'm not a village idiot and I am doing this on purpose. Section 2. Speeds and Feeds. I've already shown in the first section that if you spin the part too fast, it's likely to chatter. Just by slowing the flywheel down, the chattering has disappeared. This lathe has a power cross feed, which is very useful for certain operations. Sometimes though, you really have a problem with chattering and can't get rid of it. And you occasionally have to resort to turning the chuck by hand. You need to turn off the power to the lathe completely. And on my small Myford lathe, it's great because you can lift the lid and grab the belt and just pull the belt. But on other lathes you have to make a handle to fit in the end of the hollow headstock spindle, then you just wind the handle for a considerable amount of time at a very slow speed. The speed of the power cross feed is relative to the speed of the spindle. So as you slow down the lathe, this slows down. So I've changed the ratio on the gearbox. And as you can see in this clip, the power crossfeed handle is going considerably faster than it did. And now there is no sign of any chatter. There's a nice sound coming from the cutting tool and I'm getting a good finish. This round nose tool has a carbide tip, which is great for turning castings. When turning castings, it's a good idea to use carbide tip tools because if you use high speed steel tooling, as you cut through the initial shale and sand layer of the casting, the high-speed steel tool will become blunt and need resharpening frequently. Section 3. Using a tool post grinder. A while back, I bought a Proxon tool holder. And as shown here, it allows the fitting of a Proxon Micromot drill into the quick-change tool holder of my lathe. You may be wondering why I'm using this piece of emery cloth. I'm just using it to remove the sharp edge. A quick word about the concentricity of the flywheel. It's quite good externally, but when it was turned, it wasn't fully aligned internally. It's difficult with this type of flywheel because you cannot take a cut to true up the rim because the inner rim of the flywheel is not continuous. Back to the grinding operation. I could use an ordinary grinder, so why am I using a flapper wheel? Well, it seems to be a bit less dangerous because a solid grinding wheel could shatter. And I do like the flexibility of flapper wheels generally. I use them a lot for cleaning up metal parts. In fact, my Proxon angle grinder is generally fitted with a flapper wheel and it's just perfect for cleaning up bits of metal. Please be aware, I am not putting much pressure on the flywheel with the flapper wheel. And I suppose it would be a good idea to run the lathe in reverse. But the reversing switch on this particular lathe is currently faulty. I'll put that job on my list of things to do. 
you can hear the nice sound that's been made. And the good thing about doing this job is it doesn't give a polished finish to the edge of the flywheel. It looks like it's been turned with a scale turning tool. Yes, it's shiny, but it does have some machining marks in it. I think I'd better mention that I'm using a very slow traverse speed on the cross slide. Everything I've said previously about speeds and feeds refer to turning and are not really necessary when using a tool post grinder. In this close up look at the rim of the flywheel and you can see these very very fine grooves. These lines are caused by using a faster spindle speed and a very fine slow cross feed entirely the opposite to the turning operation. At this stage of the operation I think it's time to mention that some viewers do not like the idea of sanding or grinding in the lathe because it damages the slideways and the bearings. Well, okay, I go with that. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. All I can say is I've owned this lathe for something like 45 years and I've used it a lot. I've sawn and filed in it, I've sanded in it, repaired many steam engines and turned many castings, and I've built a couple of locomotives from scratch on this lathe. And for that reason, I find no problem using a flapper wheel on a piece of cast iron. I'm 70 years old currently, and this lathe is going to outlive me and possibly my grandchildren. What I'm doing at the moment is grinding the other side of the flywheel. I didn't have to remove the flywheel and turn it round. I just moved the flapper wheel to the other side. I thought it would be a good idea to remove all the cast iron dust from the paintwork before I remove the flywheel from the chuck. I'm very pleased with the way this has come out, particularly as I really abused it by trying to make it chatter for the video. This piece of silver steel is exactly 7 sixteenths of an inch, and once the grub screw marks it, it doesn't want to come out of the hole. I used a copper-faced hammer just to persuade it. And that's it, the flywheel is complete, and I think it looks okay. I am, of course, going through a red flywheel phase. With everything reassembled, it's time to give the engine a run, and it's at this point that I'm going to go and do something else. And I'll leave the engine running to the end of the video. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.